Shalom. This week's Torah portion is the second one in the Torah cycle. Uh, it is Noach, and it begins in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, and it goes on through Genesis chapter 11, verse 32. Um, the Haftar is Isaiah 54, uh, chapter 54, verse 1, and it goes through Isaiah 55, verse 5. So, let's begin. <clears throat> This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with Elohim, and Noah brought forth three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth was corrupt before Elohim, and the earth was filled with violence. And Elohim looked upon the earth and saw that it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And Elohim said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And see, I am going to destroy them from the earth. <clears throat> make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, and cover it inside and outside with a covering. And this is how you are to make it. The length of the ark is 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. Make a window for the ark and complete it to a cubit from above and set the door of the ark in its side. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. And see, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life from under the heavens. All that is on the earth is to die. And I shall establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. And of all the living of all flesh, two of each, you are to bring into the ark to keep them alive with you, a male and a female, of the birds after their kind and of the cattle after their kind, and of all creeping creatures of the ground after their kind, two of each are to come to you to keep them alive. As for you, take, all, take of all food that is eaten and gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. And Noah did according to all that Elohim had commanded him, so he did. And Jehovah said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Of all the clean beast, take with you seven pairs, a male and his female, and of the beast that are unclean, two, a male and his female. <clears throat> and of the birds of the heavens, seven pairs, male and female, to keep offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For after seven more days I am sending rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and shall wipe from the face of the earth all that stand that I created. And Noah did according to all that Yehovah commanded him. Now Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters were on the earth, and Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. <clears throat> of the clean beast, and of the beast that are unclean, and of birds, and of all that creep on the earth. Two by two, they went into the ark to Noah, male and female, as Elohim had commanded Noah. And it came to be, after seven days that the waters of the flood were on the earth, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second new moon, the 17th day of the new moon, on that day all the fountains of the great deep were, <clears throat> were broken up, and the windows of the heavens were opened. And the rain was on the earth forty days and forty nights. On that same day Noah and Shem and Ham and Yepheth the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them, went into the ark. They and every life form after its kind, 
and every beast after its kind, and every creeping creature that creeps on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two, of all flesh in which is the breath of life. And those going in, male and female of all flesh, went in as Elohim had commanded him, and Yahovah shut him up. And the flood was on the earth forty days, and the waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. And the waters were mighty and great, and the waters were mighty and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. And the waters were exceedingly mighty on the earth, and all the high mountains under the heaven under all the heavens were covered. The waters became mighty, fifteen cubits upward, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died, the creeping creature on the earth, birds and cattle and beast, and every swarming creature that swarms on the earth, and all mankind, all in those nostrils, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life. All that was on the dry land died. So he wiped off all that stand, which were on the face of the ground, both man and beast, creeping creature and bird of the heavens. And they were wiped off from the earth. And only Noah was left, and those with him in the ark. And the waters were mighty on the earth, one hundred and fifty days. And Elohim remembered Noah, and all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. And Elohim made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters subsided. And the fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were stopped. And the rain from the heavens was withheld. And the waters receded steadily from the earth. And at the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters diminished. And in the seventh new moon, the seventeenth day of the new moon, the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased steadily until the tenth new moon. In the tenth new moon, on the first day of the new moon, the tops of the mountains became visible. And it came to be at the end of the forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent out a raven which kept going out and turning back until the waters had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove from him to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. But the dove found no resting place for its feet and returned into the ark to him, for the waters were on the face of all the earth. So he put out his hand and took it and pulled it in into the ark to himself. And he waited yet another seven days. And again he sent the dove out from the ark. And the dove came to him in the evening, and see a freshly plucked olive leaf was in its mouth. And Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. And he waited yet another seven days, and sent out the dove, which did not return to him again. And it came to be in the six hundred and first year, in the month, in the first month, the first day of the new moon, that the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and saw the surface of the ground was dry. And in the second new moon, on the twentieth day and of the new moon, the earth was dry. And Elohim spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every life form of all flesh that is with you, of birds, of cattle, and all creeping creatures, the creeping creatures on the earth, and let them teem on the earth and bear and increase on the earth. So Noah went out, and his sons and his wife and his sons and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping creature, and every bird, whatever creeps on the earth, according to their kind, went out of the ark. And Noah built a slaughter place to Yehovah and took of every clean beast and of every clean bird and offered ascending offerings on the slaughter place. And Yehovah smelled a soothing fragrance. And Yehovah said to, 
said in his heart, Never again shall I curse the ground because of man. Although the inclination of man's heart is evil from his youth, and never again strike all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. <clears throat> and Elohim blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and increase and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you is in every beast of the earth, on every bird of the heavens, on all that creeps on the ground, and on all the fish of the sea, into your hand they have been given. Every creeping creature that lives is food for you. I have given you all as I gave the green plants. But do not eat flesh with its life, its blood, but only your blood for your lives I require. From the hand of every beast I require it, and from the hand of man. From the hand of every man's brother I require the life of man. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of Elohim he, he may, has he made man. As for you, be fruitful and increase. Bring forth teemingly in the earth and increase it. <clears throat> and Elohim spoke to Noah and his sons with him, saying, And I, see, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you and with every living being that is with you, of the birds, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, all of all that go out of the ark, every beast of the earth, and I shall establish my covenant with you, and never again is all flesh cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again is there a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living being that is that is with you for all generations to come. I shall set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And it shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I shall remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living being of all flesh and never again let the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh and the rainbow shall be in the cloud and I shall see it to remember the everlasting covenant between Elohim and every living being of all flesh that is on the earth and Elohim said to Noah this is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth and the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Jepheth. And Ham <clears throat> was the father of Kenan. These three were the sons of Noah, and all the earth was overspread with, from them. And Noah, a man of the soil, began pl and planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Kenan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. So Shem and Yepheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. But their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine, and he knew what his younger son had done to him. And he said, Cursed is Canaan, let him become a servant of servants to his brothers. And he said, Blessed be Yehovah, the Elohim of Shem, and let Kenan become his servant. Let Elohim enlarge Yepeth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Kenan become his servant. And Noah lived after the flood three hundred and fifty years. So all the days of Noah were nine hundred and fifty years, and he died. And this is the genealogy of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Yepheth. And sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Yepheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Yawan, 
and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tiras. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Rephath, and Tagaram, Tagarma. And the sons of Yawan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dadanim. From these, the coastland peoples of the nations were separated into their lands, everyone according to his language, according to their clans, into their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mitzrayim, and Put, and Kenan, and the sons of Cush, Seba, and Hawila, and Sabat, and Rama, and Septika, and the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Didan, and Cush brought forth Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one of the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yehovah. Therefore it is said, like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Yehovah. And the beginning of his reign was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kelneh, in the land of Shinar. From that land he went to Ashur-shur, and built Nineveh, and Rehoboth, Ur, and Kelah, and Resin between Nineveh and Kelah, that the great city. And Mitraim brought forth Ludum, and Anamim, and Lahabim, and Naphtuhim, and Pathrusim, and Kasluhim, from whom came the Philistines, and Kaphtorim, and Kenan brought forth Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Yebusite, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Huite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arwadite, and the Semarite, and the Hamathite, and afterward the clans of the Kenanites were spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as you go toward Gerar, as far as Ezah, as you go toward Sedom, and Amora and Adma, and Seboim, as far as Lasha. These were the sons of Ham, according to their clans, according to their languages, in their lands, in their nations. And also to Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Yepheth, Yeth, the elder children were born. The sons of Shem, Elaim, and Ashur, and Arpachshad, and Lud, and Aram, and the sons of Aram, Utz, and Hul, and Gether, and Mash, <coughs> and Arpachshad, brought forth Shelah, and Shelah brought forth Eber, and to Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Yachtan. And Yachtan brought forth Almodad, and Sheleth, and Hatsarmawath, and Yera and Hadoram, and Uzul, and Dikla, and Obal, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Hawila, and Yobab, all these were sons of Yoptan. And their dwelling place was from Mesha, as you go toward Sefer, a mountain of the east, these were the sons of Shem, according to their clans, according to their languages, in their lands, according to their nations. These were the clans of the sons of Noah, according to their generations, in their nations, and from these nations were divided on the earth after the flood. <clears throat> and all the earth had one language and one speech, and it came to be as they set out from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said to each other, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. 
and they had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens, and make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered over all the face of the earth. Then Yehovah came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And Yehovah said, Look, they are one people, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. And now they are not going to be withheld from doing whatever they plan to do. Come, let us go there and confuse their language so that they do not understand one another's speech. And Yehovah scattered them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. That is why its name was called Babel, because there Yehovah confused the language of all the earth, and from there Yehovah scattered them over the face of all the earth. This is the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and brought forth Arpachshad two years after the flood. And after he brought forth Arpachshad, Shem lived 500 years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Arpachshad lived 35 years and brought forth Shelah. And after he brought forth Shelah, Arpachshad lived 403 years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Shelah lived 30 years and brought forth Eber. And after he brought forth Eber, Shelah lived 403 years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Eber lived 34 years and brought forth Peleg. And after he brought forth Peleg, Eber lived 430 years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Peleg lived 30 years and brought forth Reu. And after he brought forth Reu, Peleg lived 209 years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Reu lived 32 years and brought forth Sirog. After he brought forth Sirog, Reu lived 207 years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Sirog lived 30 years and brought forth Nahor. And after he brought forth Nahor, Sirog lived 200 years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Nahor lived 29 years and brought forth Terah. And after he brought forth Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and brought forth sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and brought forth Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah brought forth Abram, Nahor and Haran, <coughs> excuse me, and Haran brought forth Lot, and Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his birth in Ur Kazdim. And Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran the father of Milcah, and the father of Yitzkah. And Sarai was barren, she had no child. And Terah took his son Abram, and his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and went out with them from Erkazdim to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah came to be two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Haftarah, Isaiah 54, 1 through Isaiah 55, 5. Sing, O barren one, you who did not bear, break forth into singing, and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the deserted one are more than the children of the married woman, said Yehovah. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Spare not, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. 
For you shall break forth to the right and to the left, and your seed inherit the nations, and make the deserted cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you shall not be put to shame, nor hurt. You shall not be humiliated, for the shame of your youth you shall forget, and not remember the repro reproach of your widowhood any more. For your Maker is your husband. Yahovah of hosts is his name, and the set-apart one of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the Elohim of all the earth. For Yahovah has called you like a woman, forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when you were refused, declares your Elohim. For a little while I have forsaken you, but with great compassion I shall gather you. In an overflow of wrath, I, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting loving commitment, I shall have compassion on you, said Yehovah, your Redeemer. For this is the waters of Noah to me, in that I have sworn that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth, so have I sworn to not to be wroth with you, nor to rebuke you. For though the mountains be removed and the hills be shaken, my loving commitment is to remove is not removed from you, nor is my co covenant of peace shaken, said Yehovah, who has compassion on you. O oh, you afflicted one, tossed with storm and not comforted, see, I am setting your stones in antimony and shall lay your foundations with sapphires, or sapphires, and shall make your battlements of rubies, your gates of crystal, and your walls of precious stones, and your children taught by Yehovah, and the peace of your children great. In righteousness you shall be established, far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and far from ruin, for it does not come near you. See, they shall indeed assemble, but not because of me. Whoever shall assemble against you falls for your sake. See, I myself have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire, who brings forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall prove wrong. This is the inheritance of the servants of Yehovah, and their righteousness from me declares Yehovah. O oh, everyone who thirst, come to the waters, and you who have no silver, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without silver, and without price. Why do you weigh out silver for what is not bread, and your labor for what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and let your being delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me, hear so that your being lives, and let me make an everlasting covenant with you, the trustworthy, loving commitments of Dawid. See, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. See, a nation you do not know, you shall call, and a nation who does not know you run to you because of Yehovah your Elohim and the set-apart one of Yisrael, for he has adorned you. Shalom.